Hey you guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is something that's really exciting for me. As you know, if you've been following me, I did become a yoga teacher in October of 2020 is when I started and then I graduated from my 300 hour certification in November and then I'm now taking extra distance learning to get my 500 hour certification. And so I've been practicing yoga for quite some time before I became a yoga teacher. And obviously I've been continuing to <laughs> practice yoga um, throughout my distance learning and stuff like that. The reason that I haven't made any videos is because I think that it's really important to um, speak on the culture and the origins of yoga rather than just really westernizing it and taking advantage of it. What I did get requested is to just do some basic beginner stretching. It was requested from a lovely follower of mine on Instagram and I just couldn't say no. It was such a sweet request. And so I decided here's what I'm comfortable with. I will be taking you through some poses that I have learned through my yoga practice, through asana, which is the physical practice, the poses um, of what in Western culture we deem as yoga, but um, you know, anyone who's been studying yoga for a long time or comes from that lineage, uh, obviously we know that it's so much more than that. I think that it's important, even though I'm just going to take you through some stretching today, I think it's important for you to know that the reason that I know these stretches and basically what I know about the body is because of my teachings from being a yoga teacher. So it's important for me to recognize that yoga was created uh, over 5,000 years ago in the Indus Valley in Northern India. There's so much more that goes into it. I'm not qualified to speak on it. At this time, I have not read all of the ancient texts. You know, it's uh, gonna be like a lifelong journey uh, to be quite honest with you. So I would love <laughs> to educate you further and as I learn to educate you as well. And I just think that it's important to appreciate culture and it will always be my hope that I am appreciating over appropriating. As we also know, India is going through really rough times right now with COVID. So I am going to leave some resources in the description box. This content is free for you. And so it would be so great to me if you could donate even a little bit to those resources helping out um, with some COVID relief. And the AdSense from this video specifically will be going to uh, COVID relief in India as well. I just think that it's important. These are just the choices that I'm making to feel confident in my decisions today. <laughs> and it may seem over the top for some, it may seem like not enough for some, um, but I'm just doing the best with what I know. But without further ado, let's get into some basic stretches that we can do for our body. It's so beneficial to stretch out our muscles. It really helps with a lot of pain, circulation, being mobile, being able to continue to move. Something that we said in my practice and in, in my teachings is we wanna move now so that we can move later. And that really resonates with me, somebody who dealt with chronic pain, especially in my back. It's really important to me to take care of my body now so that later on in life I can move as well. So let's get started. I'm gonna teach you just some basic stretches and poses and how I like to do them, how I've been taught to do them. Something else I really need to put a disclaimer on is there are so many different opinions on how to stretch, on how to practice asana, yoga um, as well. This is what I was taught. This is what is safest in the body, in my opinion, okay? There are people who believe you have to look a certain way when you're stretching, that you're not doing it properly. If your leg is not 90 degree angle, that's not where I'm coming from with my movement ever. I will never teach ego stretching, never teach you know ego lifting, anything like that. And that's a real problem. And you can really damage yourself that way. So this is the type of teacher that I wanna be. I wanna be somebody who is accessible and inclusive to different bodies and different um, movement levels. And that's really important to me. So if you're someone who's coming here, you're a yoga teacher or whatever it might be, and you're thinking this is wrong, maybe just ask yourself why you feel like it's wrong. If I'm teaching something that is harmful, of course, I think that that's important that we illuminate. But I think that it's also important to realize that there's more than one way to do something and this is the safest way that I believe it is to practice and also stretch your body. So with all that out of the way, this is gonna be like a follow along. So this is like a class. Um, this will be the timestamp because I've been rambling on. So let's get started. Let's get into a tabletop position. So by tabletop, I mean a wrists under shoulders and knees under hips. And you wanna put most of your weight in the heel of your hand 
and between the thumb and the forefinger. And spread your fingers nice and wide. And really feel the grounding in both of your palms. And tuck your toes under. Lift your hips high to the sky. And here we find ourselves in downward facing dog. And so as you can see, my heels are touching the mat and my stance is quite narrow. Options here to lengthen our stance, to widen our feet, and also to lift the heels. The heels do not need to come to the mat. This is all based on your mobility. And all of us have different mobility. So it's really important that you listen to your body. If I had really tight hamstrings, the muscles that run along the back of your thighs, if I had really long hamstrings right now, if I had really tight hamstrings right now, my apologies, then I wouldn't have my heels all the way to the ground. I would have them lifted. And perhaps I would have my knees bent. And maybe this still gives me a stretch in the hamstrings. And it's important to recognize this because overstretching is actually quite detrimental uh, to your body. You can create scar tissue, you can pull muscles, and it'll really set you back. So what we're looking for here is just a really nice light stretch, just a light sensation in the backs of the thighs. And you're also strengthening your arms and your wrists and your ankles here as well. But mainly for us today, we'll focus on the stretch through the calves, just behind the knees and in the hamstrings. And just finding what stance works in your body. And reaching those hips high towards the ceiling really helps stretch out those hamstrings. And whatever it looks like in your body, it does not matter. And the goal is just to get that stretch throughout the backs of the legs. And we'll go ahead here, lower your knees back down to the mat, untuck your toes. And again, we'll find wrists under shoulders and knees under hips. And from here, take your knees mat width apart. So right knee to the right side of the mat, left knee to the left side of the mat. Bring your big toes to touch and sit back down in between your heels. Reach your body forward, reach your arms forward. And your forehead comes to the mat. I don't think you'll be able to hear me <laughs> if I do that. But here we are in wide-legged child's pose. And feeling a nice stretch under the armpits, reaching your fingertips forward, opening up the hips here as well. <coughs> and again, your sit bones do not need to meet your heels. You can have a block in between for a little bit more space. Have a block placed on your heels, allowing that space between the sit bones to be a little bit less. And you can also bring that block <coughs> up towards your forehead. And if that feels better for you. It's all about finding what feels right in your body when we're stretching. So for me, if I had a lot of pain in my hips here, in the front of my hips, that's what I would do. I would take rolled up blankets or sweaters or this block, and I would just allow it to sit there. It takes a little bit of the pressure off of my hips. And take this time here just to breathe. Focus your energy towards your breath.
Ooh, we'll take our props away here. And come back into a tabletop position. And bring your knees a little bit closer together. Again, finding wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. And come into a downward facing dog once again. And I'm going to take you through pigeon pose here. But it's important for me to note that there is an alternative to pigeon pose that stretches the same muscles. It has the same benefits. It's just not quite as intense. So I will take you through pigeon pose just because it works with my flow right now. And then afterwards, I will teach you what we call thread the needle, but also others call it eye of the needle. So I like to come up on the balls of my feet. And I lift my right leg in the air. And breathe it through my body, right knee comes to right wrist, sending the left leg long behind you, untuck the toe, and bringing that sit bone down to the mat. So this can be a little bit intense if you're first starting out with your stretching. So really great to have a block here, and you can put it under your sit bone. You'll be able to see it better on the other side for sure. Again, we're just closing that gap between the mat and our body. So it creates less pressure on the muscles that we're trying to stretch, which is the piriformis muscle and the glute and other muscles as well. The thing with these poses is we have muscles that are being really targeted and then kind of supporting muscles that are also getting a little bit of stretch. For instance, I can feel it in my psoas muscle in the, in the left side. It's the front of the hip here because I'm actively pushing my left leg back, kind of in an active pigeon instead of a passive pigeon at this time. But we're also stretching out the right glute. And so if you've found that this is accessible for you, this pose here, or you've found props that can aid you in making this pose accessible, you can begin to lower your upper body down to the mat. And again, your forehead meets a solid surface, and that can be the mat or stacked fists or perhaps your block. And just making sure that you're grounded through the forehead. And we don't really want to be floating in space during these stretches. We want to be able to fully relax into them. Something that's important to note here as well <coughs> with pigeon pose, I've seen it taught where the bent knee leg, the bent knee leg needs to be 90 degree angle for you to be performing this stretch accurately and that's just not true. We all have different skeletal structures, not everybody's skeleton and I need to put emphasis on that skeleton so you cannot change it. <laughs> Uh, not everyone's skeleton is the same, and so your hips may not be able to literally bend that way because of the way that your bones um, were created. And so it's important to know that the goal is the stretch. The goal is not a visual, which is also why I love not practicing in front of a mirror because I focus so much more on my feelings in my body rather than what it looks like to the outside eye. And that's also a really hard thing to battle with, with your ego. And we all have an ego, um, no matter how much you listen to it or are removed from it, we all have it. And so it's really easy to get into that ego. But it's so much more beneficial listening to the cues that your body is giving you rather than the visuals. All right, and if you've been using blocks, you can remove them. And bring your palms back to your mat, straighten your elbows, push your upper body up, and tuck your left toes under, and send your hips high to the sky. Push off, use your abdominals slightly, and lift back into a downward facing dog. And here I kind of like to 
lift and lower my heels however far your heels go and kind of just bring life back into that right foot right leg and kind of feel the the difference between the two as well which is really cool to experience and then when you're ready come back up onto the balls of those feet lift the left leg and breathe it out through your body left knee to left wrist and right leg comes long behind you sinking that left hip into the mat and so here's what i mean by if you need a block so say you have mobility until here and this is where you're at and it's hard to stay in this position it's a little bit uncomfortable maybe it's pulling in this area here in the um, uh, left glute area and left hamstring that's where I would love to bring a block in that closes the gap now I can release into that and I'm not actually stretching and pulling on that muscle in a dangerous way I have support there for it and if this block isn't enough I can take a block and a pillow whatever I need to support myself if that's not something that is necessary for you and you can get that hip comfortably down to the mat and you can begin to lower yourself and closer to the mat and have your forehead meet a solid surface and I'm such a chatterbox so I apologize but something else to note here both sides of our body can be different I think that as humans we are so interested in symmetry and that's just not always the case with our body one leg may work harder than the other one arm may work harder than the other and so it's natural that one may be more mobile than the other so if you found that you could get the right sit bone all the way down to the mat and it was no problem but you're finding that's not the case on the left side let's take the judgment away and really just be okay with that fact and instead of thinking things like why am i not flexible why can i do this on the right and i can't on the left again let's take that ego away and not worry about the visual and just worry about stretching that left side and stretching it mindfully not creating damage and I did not bring a clock in here <laughs> so these sides may not be even which obviously we would prefer to be stretching them for the same amount of time but unfortunately I forgot so hopefully I can manage <laughs> Okay, that feels about the same, hopefully. <laughs> Let's remove those props and bring your palms back to the mat. Push your upper body up, straighten your arms. And tuck your right toes under, lift your hips high. And back to downward facing dog. And again, let's just bring some life back into that left leg. And we'll come back to a tabletop position here just quickly. Untuck the toes. And swinging our shins to the left, come down onto your sit bones, turn all the way over. And we'll be on our back body here. And laying all the way down on your back. And bring your knees bent, soles of your feet are on the mat. This is turning into a yoga class basically. <laughs> I came in with one idea and here we are. I can't help it. I'm so used to teaching yoga. <laughs> so arms are long beside you, soles of your feet to the mat. You can close your eyes if you feel comfortable. This is a really relaxing pose for me. This is the thread the needle or eye of the needle, however you prefer. I prefer thread the needle. And this is a great option to lead up to pigeon pose. And that's the pose that we just did, the stretch that we just did. 
And so lift your right leg all the way to the ceiling. And flex your foot as if you're pushing the ceiling away from you, but very passively. So we're not actively pushing our hip up. And just turn your foot so that your toes are slightly right, kind of externally rotating that, that leg. And your hip is open. And bring right ankle to left thigh. And if you can feel a stretch right here, that's great. Just stay right here. And you'll feel it in the right glute, right outer hip area. And possibly down the thigh. And if not, you need a little more depth to lift that left foot up off of the mat and take your right arm, weave it through that space you've created. It's almost like you have like a four. If you extend your left leg, it's a four. Weave it through the top and clasp it on the other side with your left hand. Gently pull your left thigh towards you. And some common mistakes here in this pose are overstretching and so pulling so that your sit bones are off of the mat that's overstretching pulling so that you're trying to get your nose towards your knee because you think that that's the goal is to get your nose to your knee that's not the goal it just creates pressure in the neck and kind of almost like a crunch <laughs> that's not our goal here today And the goal here is to find a stretch right through our right glute in the outer hip area and maybe a little bit into the right thigh. Just depending on how tight you are, that's where you'll feel it. And our goal is not to get our knee to our nose. A great option here as well is to flex the right foot, kind of protect that right knee if you have sensitive knees. I always practice with my left leg like this, but you can allow it to relax as well. I just have always practiced like this because then I can actively push, whereas I find like this, I don't actively push. Because as we relax into the stretch as well, you can notice that your body kind of gives you a little bit more leeway you find a little bit more mobility as you relax into the stretch and so if i have my leg like this i'm ready to give it that extra little nudge but other than that there's no benefit to it that i know you can just hang out here and another option here as well is to grasp the shin for an even deeper stretch my camera shut off on me, which was really rude, but I believe we were here, perhaps, uh, in Thread the Needle. And so let's lower our left leg. If it was lifted, uncross the right leg, have it meet the left. And then if that was a good pose for you, it felt good in your body, then I invite you to do the same on the left side, so lifting the left leg turning your toes to the left and having left ankle meet right thigh and lift the right foot up. Great option for you here. Another option, start the same way, lift the left leg, turn the toes to the left, have the left ankle meet right thigh and then prop yourself up. So coming up onto the palms and so you're in a seated position. And the straighter you make your arms, the more intensity you're gonna bring into the stretch. And so this is if you felt there was an issue holding your legs above your body. It was hard work or just wasn't feeling right in your body. This is another great option. And you can also turn your hands around, bring your hands closer to your body, Really close that gap, find a really deep stretch in the outer left hip, left glute area. And alternatively, you can also do this seated on a chair, which I can actually show to you now. 
And so wherever you are, whichever pose is working for you, you can stay right there. And I'll just grab a chair to show that option. And so here I am a little bit out of frame on my stool. And so what I can do seated here is take my, oh, we were on the left, <laughs> is take my left leg, turn it, and here we are. This is how I picture my dad sitting often. <laughs> and just slowly bend your body towards your knee, your right knee. And you can feel the same stretch here. It's just a little bit more accessible if it's harder for you to get on the floor or whatever might be going on in your body. You can try these out regardless of where you're at. And just find which one works best for you because there's no trophy for picking one option over the other. Not on my channel. <laughs> so whichever feels right in your body is the right one. And this is a pose that I really like to daydream in as well. So sometimes I'll hold this pose for three minutes or so and just really fall into dreamland. Kind of like my own positive intention meditation sort of thing. And wherever you are, find your right foot back on the ground. And uncross your left leg, have it meet the right. And send your legs long in front of you. And if you're lying down. And you can meet me to say goodbye. Well, you guys, those are some of my favorite basic stretches. They're mostly lower body focused. That's where I have most of my issues. So I hope that that was helpful for you, beneficial for you. I hope that you feel great if you went through that with me. Um, I had a lot of fun teaching you what I love. Um, so thank you again so much for watching. Thank you for the request. I would love to do more videos in this nature if that's something that you're interested in watching. So let me know in the comments down below. Again, please visit those resources that I have left in the description box, places to donate. And other than that, I'll see you in my next one. Thank you so much for watching.